No. Please. It wasn't me. Ah, there you are. Mo, thank you for arresting this criminal. It's very good of you. Oh, thank me. Thank Vertex cover. Now let's talk about how we would actually apply Vertex cover. Imagine we have a museum and we would like to place a security guard in every key location of the museum such that all art is visible. We want to make sure that each security guard can see an appropriate amount of artwork along the walls and that none of the artwork is blocked by another wall. How can we illustrate this as a graph? Imagine we put a vertex in every corner of the museum. Then we add a edge for every hallway that exists. We go along this graph and we pick vertices where every edge is now visible. That will signify every hallway is now covered by a vertice. Then we will be able to see that there is a unique place we would like to put each security guard in this museum. In order to prove vertex cover is NP complete, we must prove that vertex cover is both in NP as well as NP hard. I shall now explain how to do the former. We first build a polynomial time deterministic verifier on input G, K and W. K is the non-negative integer which signifies the number of vertices in the cover of G, which is the input graph. W is the answer to the cover itself. W consists of the cover in the graph G, or the set of vertices in the graph. Step one checks that our verifier is valid and that K is a natural number. If neither of these cases are true, we reject. Step two checks that W is a list of vertices. Specifically, W is a covering of the graph G. If these are not the case, we reject. Step three checks that the size of W is less than or equal to K. If the size of the covering of vertices are greater than K, that means the covering covers more than K, and so we must therefore reject. If none of the above cases reject, we move on to step four, which checks that every edge in the graph G is contained in W. If there is not an edge in G which is not contained in W, we reject. Finally, if all of the above are true, we accept. Asserting that W is a full vertex covering of the graph G and K is greater than or equal to the size of the vertices mentioned. For our verifier to be a known polynomial time running one, we must have W polynomial in runtime. We know W, the witness, is polynomial in runtime because W will be less than or equal to the vertices in G. G will be the size of the input or big O of N. Therefore, W must be less than or equal to big O of n, and thus it must be polynomial in runtime. The verifier runs in polynomial time. We know this because each step in the verifier takes at most big O of n squared. Step 1 takes big O of n, step 2 takes big O of n squared time, and step 3 takes constant time, while step 4 takes big O of n squared as well we know the final step takes more or less constant time. Therefore, the verifier runs in polynomial time. We shall now prove that if G, K are in vertex cover, then the verifier we built accepts. If G, K are in vertex cover, then we know there exists a complete covering of every edge in G, and the covering size or vertex, or vertex size is less than or equal to K. So after we have checked the graph and K in steps one and two, we can establish that W is a subset of the vertices in G and it is a complete covering as specified in step four of our verifier. As we have discussed, W, which is the total edge covering of G and whose size is less than or equal to K, we can accept in step five as desired. Therefore, the verifier accepts. We shall now prove that if the verifier accepts, GK is in vertex cover. If we assume the verifier accepts, then we know by definition that G is a valid graph and the size of W is less than or equal to K. We know this through the final steps taken in our verifier, which would have been passed if we assume it to have accepted. Finally, we know that the entire graph of G has been covered in the witness, as this must not have been rejected in step four of our verifier. Therefore, G, K, is in vertex cover if the verifier accepts. We thus have a polynomial time verifier for vertex cover and therefore vertex cover is in NP. To prove that vertex cover is NP hard, we will prove that clique many one reduces to vertex cover. So consider the following definition of a function f. 
on input GK, output G prime, K prime as follows. Create G prime where G prime is the complement graph of G. So the vertices are the same and the edges are all edges that don't exist in the original edge set. Let K prime be the size of all the vertices minus the original K from clique. Output G prime and K prime. We claim that this function f is computable in polynomial time. In step one, we see g prime is at most on the order of v squared to compute because we copy all the original vertices and all the edges that are not in the original edge set. In step two, we see k prime is in constant time to declare, and step three is constant time to output. Thus, f runs in polynomial time on the order of v squared. We claim that if gk is in clique, then g prime k prime is in vertex cover. Assume gk is in clique, then we know g has a clique of size k. So let that set of vertices in the clique be v clique. The size of v clique is k. So we pick any edge in g prime uv. We know at least u or v must have been in the graph, but not in the clique. Uh, so it's in vg minus v clique. We know this because if both u and v were in v clique, then the edge would be in v clique, which means uv is in the set of edges of g. But this is impossible since uv is in the complement graph. Thus, all edges in g prime are covered by the vertices in vg minus v clique. So now we claim if g prime k prime is in vertex cover, then gk is in clique. So we assume g prime k prime is in vertex cover. We know g prime has a vertex cover v prime of size v minus k. This means that all edges in g prime are connected to the vertices in the vertex cover. Thus, if we pick any edge u v from g prime, both u and v cannot be outside v prime. This means all edges u v, such that both u and v are outside the set v prime, are in g, meaning these edges are a clique of size k. So we have a function f computable in polynomial time, which maps clique to vertex cover. Since clique is np-hard, we know vertex cover is also np-hard. Since vertex cover is in np and vertex cover is np-hard, vertex cover is np-complete. So essentially now what we want to do is find an approximation algorithm for our vertex cover problem. We know that vertex cover is NP hard, so there is no real easy polynomial time um, algorithm that solves this problem. However, we can approximate it um, with a greedy algorithm. Now, we already have defined the problem as given the graph of a set of vertexes and edges. Um, we know there is, exists a minimum subset C that covers all of the edges in V, in, in E, excuse me. But uh, we want to figure out how we can do this. So our approximation algorithm is going to be start by choosing an edge um, uv that is contained within the edges of the graph. Let our cover c be what already exists in the cover um, union that those new two new vertices. Now we're going to remove all edges that the vertex the vertex u and the vertex v touch, and repeat this algorithm until all edges are gone. Now, as it turns out, this algorithm is actually within two times of the optimal solution. We'll reuse our graph to illustrate this. Now, we begin by selecting this one edge and circling um, its two outer vertices. We can then see that um, we, we can then like begin crossing out all of the edges that this graph is connected to. We now find a new edge that we haven't already crossed out and circle those edges and repeat. Now we see there are six vertices in this approximation. We'll repeat this for um, an optimal solution that we've already solved for. And we see that there are five in this optimal solution. And we notice that six is um, significantly less than 10. So we are, in fact, within two times of the optimal for this problem.